Um, Peter Louis, thank you so much for do joining us. Your, your book before this was called The Republic of Gupta, A Story of State Capture. Why the focus on Ace Magashule? Yeah, uh, good afternoon, good afternoon, uh, afternoon to your viewers. Um, basically, you know, Ace Magashule is an individual within the ANC, within the liberation movement, and later on within the broader government uh, set up in South Africa that for a very long time has been the subject of some very concerning reporting on his dealings in government contracts in the Free State, even though these reportings were quite sporadic at a time. And you now, given the current uh, political machinations within the ruling ANC and Mahashile's position, you know, uh, having the very powerful position, position of SG, it remains um, absolutely vital that these kind of characters who have a very direct say in government decisions in South Africa by means of their uh, proximity to power in the ruling party is subjected to scrutiny um, in a manner such as this uh, book set out to achieve. Uh, now, uh, there have been book extracts that's been circulated. Your book has just come out today. Uh, there's a couple that really has caught the eye, and that is why, obviously, they splashed across Sunday newspapers, uh, especially because of the detail that you were able to put into it. Uh, the one that really caught my eye is involving um, Esma Goshule's, um relationship, as it were, with the Bloemfontein mayor at the time. And you speak in quite detail about um, um, Esma Goshule pitching up at the Bloemfontein mayor's house, um, putting, basically putting him in the car and then driving all the way to Johannesburg with the mayor not knowing where he was going. Tell us about that specific story and just yeah. how were and you able to get into so much detail? Yeah, so uh, Mr. Manjoni, former mayor uh, from the Mangaung uh, Metro, actually came on the record and in uh, quite astounding detail relayed to me his experiences in late 2013 of having been taken to the Saxon World compound by Mr. Ace Mahashule. So we'd have to remember the context in which this occurred to, which kind of like furthers the concerns around Mr. Mahashule's relationship with the Guptas. Some of the most controversial sort of state capture projects unfolded within the Free State Province. Mm. The Free at Dairy project is one such. And now it's just more sort of very concerning details that Mr. Mahashule actively aided and abetted the broader uh, Gupta state capture network. So what Mr. Manjoni basically relayed was that, you know, on one, actually basically two occasions, um, he was ferried up to Saxon World uh, by Mr. Mahashule himself. They were alone. There were uh, no entourages, no bodyguards. The two of them um, came to the, or arrived at the Saxon World estate where Mr. Mahashule, at least in the, the view or in the, eyes of Mr. Manjoni's perceptions was allowed onto the premises as somebody who had evidently been there before. He was recognized. They were let onto the uh, compound. And then they had a meeting with somebody who Manjoni then learned was uh, Atul Gupta, who made uh, some very um, forward suggestions in terms of or some, some very um, brash suggestions in terms of what might happen in President Jacob Zuma's cabinet uh, subsequently. So there would have there was, was plans allegedly in place to employ Mr. Mahashule in uh, Mr. Zuma's cabinet as the new Minister of Communications, and then Mr. Manjoni would replace Mr. Mahashule as the new Premier of the Free State. And this was basically a betting exercise, at least as relayed by Mr. Manjoni. The Guptas wanted to know if they could work with Mr. Manjoni. And then also ultimately what is of greatest concern is that uh, there's also reference to a brown envelope stuffed with cash that was handed over uh, to the duo and then they left the premises um, or the Saxon World compound with this envelope stuffed with money that they received from Mr. Gupta. Now, buying influence is one thing, but your book also contains details um, around the assassination, uh, and that's what it seems it was, of uh, businessman Igo Mpambani, and you're saying that Mr. Magashuli was involved there as well. Look, so the chapter that deals with the, the very unfortunate incident around the apparent political assassination of Mr. Ngombani, um, it doesn't implicate Mr. Mahashuli in the, in the hit itself. So what it uh, does um, lay out is some very concerning context. Uh, context. So what occurred in, in, in around 2005 was a, a very bitter power uh, feud in the ANC between rival power blocks predominantly those that kind of originated from the north and then the power block centered in the south. Mr. Mahashude's northern uh, power block has always been a vocal opponent of Mr. Ngombani, who was a government official who in then Free State Premier Beatrice Marshall's office um, 
was employed to, to clean up what already then was some very concerning issues with the administration of government funds in the province. So at the time of the murder, um, there was these ongoing spats between Mahashule's camp and then the broader southern faction and also individuals like Mr. Ngombani was trying to effect cleaner governments, governance in the province. What I do manage to reveal in the book um, after speaking to several sources involved with the matter, including a former intelligence officer, was that subsequent to the murder, there now appears to have been what can only be described as a, an effort from the police, an apparent effort from the police, to cover up the true perpetrators of Mr. Ngombani's murder. Um, there are key documents that are now missing from a court file and from a police file at the Bayswater police station in Bloemfontein. And there are also concerns that um, a, um, a hitman and a getaway driver might still be on the lease who might have real... Um, in the, a real information on who the orders or where the orders emanated from for the assassination of Mr. Ngombani. So at least peripherally, Mr. Mahashule certainly was a key player in the broader power dynamics um, that fed into what appears to be the political assassination of Mr. Ngombani. Now, your book is entitled Gangster State. It's there behind you on your bookcase. Um, uh, your, your title obviously pointing to the fact that there are people within the ruling party that are not playing by the country's rules or the party's rules, as it were. Did any of what you found uh, shock you? And how difficult was it to find the proof behind some of these very, very serious allegations that you make in this book? Yeah, so look, I think the allegations and rumors around malfeasance perpetrated by Mr. Mahashuli have been there for a very, very long, long time. And one could speak to, you know, a broad range of people from within the ruling ANC to those who later left the ANC fold, fold to join parties like the COPE, um, that Mr. Mahashuli for a very long time has been labeled as somebody who can't be trusted with money. What was shocking was that I, um, through a quite an extensive trove of leaked emails and documents that I managed to get my hands on, for the first time, find evidence that Mr. Mahashule does, as had been alleged before, seem to have a very direct role um, and line to massive government contracts in his province. So a businessman who was murdered in Santon in 2017, Mr. Egon Bombani, got a contract for 255 million rand to audit asbestos roofs in the Free State. What these leaked documents now show us is that uh, the PA of Mr. Mahashule, Ms. Uh, Morwade Sh uh, Cholota, and Ms. Ipileng Moroka, um, who is also a official within the office of the Premier, at key moments after this tender mogul got paid by the Free State Government, Mr. Mahashule's uh, um, associates or Mr. Mahashule's staffers emailed Mr. Mbambani and basically instructed him on how to make certain payments with the proceeds of that money. And in one email, actually, Ms. Cholota um, goes as far as saying is that Premier wants you to pay 470,000 Rand to this and this and this. So very real and clear fingerprints on what now appears to be a very dodgy contract from the Free State Provincial Government. Um, have you heard from the ANC? Have you heard from Mr. Ace Magashule? Yeah, just on, uh, before coming on air with you guys, uh, it seems like a statement from the ruling party is circulating. Um, I haven't had time to really go through the full text but they do seem to go with the angle of this being more fake news leveled at the party to tarnish the party's reputation, to basically besmirch the reputation of the ruling party going into the elections. So at this point, it doesn't seem like there's any effort to really deal with the, the factual matters that are raised in the book, such as the contract awarded to Mr. Mbambani and Mr. Mahashule's proximity to that contract. Now, you speak in your book about people disappearing, uh, political uh, assassinations and the like. Do you fear for your life? Look, I, I think one should never um, stop remaining vigilant in, in the line of work we do. Um, but the horse has bolted in a sense. You know, this is what I believe is a very important body of information on Mahashule's handling of the uh, Free State Provinces coffers and financial affairs is now available. Um, the horse has bolted and... Um, that that hopefully would, um, yeah, it would make it very difficult for anybody, in, at least in this context, mm. to do something stupid. We'll leave it there. Um, investigative journalist Peter Louis Meiberg, thank you so much for joining us. His book out today, uh, Gangster State, Unraveling Ace Magashule's Web of Capture.